This is part three of our negotiation book, Preparing Strategies. So we've already covered some of the basic, basic ideas, which is negotiation is very normal. It happens in many different ways, in many different places, not just business, but also in family, everyday life. We've also covered that negotiation, you need to have a goal, you need to make your goal clear. So if you have a goal, then what do we look at next? And the next thing we need to look at is this idea of how to implement that goal, how to make that goal actually happen. So when we talk about how to make a goal happen, what we're talking about is this idea of making a plan, making a plan. Now, in business, we talk about plans, don't we? We have a business plan. Uh, when we talk about finance, we have some kind of cash flow plan. How are we going to generate cash flow for the next year? So in business, we're very used to making plans. It's very normal. However, in negotiation, I think we often skip over that idea of making a plan. We often just jump into negotiation because we're always thinking, I want to get the best. I want to get more. or I want to get a lower price. But if you have a goal, it's very clear. Now you need to think how to get from the beginning to the end of that goal very important in a business negotiation and it can help you in a social negotiation also to understand this idea. Now it could be a little bit complicated because maybe you've had a business class on strategy before, maybe you've studied strategy, it's a very popular business topic and there's a lot of thick books and it can become very complicated. Well in this case I think we're very lucky because it's not very complicated luckily. So let's go ahead and look at this idea of is making a plan and creating a strategy and executing tactics. So a plan is a way that you, you know, get your ideas together, you formalize. Of course, it's best when you make a plan to discuss with your team members and to write things down so you get clear and you get unified. Now, for the plan, you're going to have two basic parts of the plan, your strategy and your tactics. And remember strategy? Strategy is that overall big picture, the big idea, the big thing you're going to do. And tactics are how do you execute that strategy? What, is the, what are the behaviors you actually do to accomplish that? So strategy is the bigger part. Tactics are the specific smaller part. So strategy is a kind of plan and it emphasizes, you emphasize this during your negotiation, but of course it's only useful if everyone on your team is on the same page and you all know the same strategy. If everybody's uh, mixed up and they have different strategies, it's not going to work. Tactics are the behaviors and again, you want to share this with your team because you want your team all to be using tactics that are helpful. It doesn't mean everyone uses the same tactics, now that's an interesting point. Of course, everyone's working on the same strategy towards the same goal. But then the tactics may differ because different team members execute different tactics to achieve things. Or they may be good at different tactics or different players, uh, different in our game players, different negotiators on the team could actually be helping each other by using different tactics. Just for example, we say good cop, bad cop, right? One person acts tough, one person acts friendly. That's one kind of way to do it. Okay, so Let's think about a simple example like a child. So of course everyone knows this when you're children. If you have a brother or a sister, you know that you often have a conflict with your brothers or sisters. And what do you do? You of course appeal to the parents. You go to your parents and you try to get what you want from your parents. Now, how do you do this? Well, your strategy may be emotion. That is, a child will use emotion. And then the tactic may be, for example, saying, I love you mommy, can you, I please have this new toy? So this strategy is the big idea, it's emotion. And how do you execute it? One way is to go tell your mommy you love her so much or maybe to clean the uh, dishes, wash the dishes and say, I cleaned the dishes, uh, now I deserve a reward. So that is a way to execute that strategy. Now, in negotiation, we're quite fortunate that there's a very simple idea here that we can use, and this is really quite amazing and quite powerful. 
In negotiation, there are four basic strategies, and, and I want you to pay attention because when we have our RPGs, you need to sit down and think in your group which one of these four. You can only have one. You can only choose one of these four strategies. And the beautiful thing, there's only four. So let's take a look at the four core strategies. Accommodation, collaboration, competition, avoidance. So let's take a look at each one of these very quickly. Accommodation. So what are we talking about when we're doing accommodation? Accommodation, of course, means that you just give in. Whatever the other side wants, you give it to them. You go ahead and you give in. Why would you use accommodation? Well, maybe there's some kind of special situation in accommodation where if you give in now, you'll get something later at a different negotiation. Or maybe your position is just so weak that you're really not going to gain much or this negotiation is not very important, so you go ahead and give, give in. Anyway, there are many reasons we'll talk about in a minute, but accommodation is one of the strategies you give in. The next one is collaboration. Collaboration. Now, collaboration is a way to work together. In, uh, it's often very thought of very close to the word uh, um, cooperation, right? Cooperation. Collaboration, working together. Avoidance, of course, avoidance means you don't negotiate at all, and that's different than collaboration because collaboration is working together. It's different than accommodation, which means you just give in. And then the last one is competition, where you try your best to win. So let me see if I can highlight these. I got a little mi mixed up here, come back here. So we've got uh, accommodation, you give in. Competition, you fight for everything you can get. Collaboration, you work together. And avoidance, you just walk away, you don't negotiate. All right, let's look at these a little bit uh, closer. Now, the great thing here is it's actually not hard to figure out. You have two questions to ask. If you ask these two questions and you answer them honestly in your team with your team members, looking at your company's position, what's our beginning position, if you answer these questions, you'll have your strategy. There's four possible answers, right? So for strategies, let's look first at question number one. How important is the negotiation outcome to your team? So that is, how important is the outcome? This negotiation right now, the result of this negotiation, how important is this? Now, usually when you work in a company, this is not up to you. This comes from your boss, from your managers, and they'll tell you this negotiation is very important. And when we play our RPG, each negotiation for each group is going to have an importance level. So let's say, for example, this negotiation is just not important. Your company's already making a lot of money doing something else. This is a small cookie, small potatoes, not a big deal. So your boss tells you, I want you to go do this negotiation, but he does not emphasize this is important or key to the company. So the outcome of this negotiation is maybe not that important. On the other hand, if the negotiation is very important because maybe the company is on the verge of bankruptcy, it's out of money, something is going wrong, so this negotiation is very important, we have to make money on this negotiation, then it's, the importance is very high. So that outcome importance is the first question. And you can break it into, you know, just high or low. It's it very important, high, or it's not so important, low. Now then question number two. How important is it to keep a good relationship with your counterpart, with the other side you're negotiating with? How important is that relationship? So in this case, again, very simple question. I'm negotiating with you. We have a relationship. In the future, are we going to have a relationship? And in the future, is that relationship important? Now, of course, you may think yes, and I may think yes, or you may think no, and I think yes, or you may think yes, and I think no. There's all possible combinations. But right now, I'm just asking myself, my team, how important is this relationship in the future? How important is this relationship in the future? Very important, not important. 
So for example, I'm going to buy from you one time, but there's many suppliers. I can buy from many. So, you know, if our relationship is not good, not a big deal, I'll find another seller that I can buy from. On the other hand, maybe your product is very special or has some kind of patent or copyright, and I need to get it from you. And it's very important to my business. So therefore, I must have a good relationship with you in the future. So I'm going to do everything I can to create a good relationship. So that would be high. So we're looking at two fundamental questions. So simple, so easy. Question one, how important is the negotiation outcome? Question two, how important is the relationship? You ask these two questions and you're going to have your strategy. We're going to talk more about that when we have a follow-up. Thank you.